Welcome to another moment in the Word. Is your ministry uh, limited because of a lack of education? Do you find that maybe your prayers, uh, they're just not as uh, eloquent as maybe a pastor, or priest, a rabbi, an iman, or somebody else that's had lots of academic education? Do you find yourself limited and you may put yourself down as a result of it? Do you find that? Well, as we look at the passage that we're looking at now, I hope that you'll have a very different view of yourself. Verse 13 and 14 of Acts chapter 4, it reads like this. Now when they, this is the Sanhedrin, this is the all the body of the very elite, those who are part of the Supreme Court of the religious community of Israel, that they have come together, they have put Peter and John in the middle of their semicircle of judgment, and they have this lame man that has been healed in the name of Jesus. And so it is now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man who was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against them. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? What a testimony. We now find that Peter had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And being filled with the Holy Spirit gave Peter an open mind and a boldness, insight, and power that he was able to speak and speak to those that are his accusers, those are his judges, but those who are the leaders of Israel. It's so important to see that because in this group is a person by the name of Shaul, and his name you'll know as Saul, as Paul. Paul is one of those who was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, and Peter is giving witness to him. And you'd never know who you're talking to that God might be using your witness to transform their lives. Don't ever be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was Paul who said, this is the power of God and the salvation. Peter, now filled with the Holy Spirit, has been asked a question by Caiaphas, who is the high priest at that time, and that is, by what power and in whose name do you do this? This referring to healing this man, this man that was paralyzed from the time he was born, this man who now is standing, this man who is dancing, who is ecstatic and praising God. How do you do this? By whose power, in what name? And and now you have Peter, and he is not holding anything back because that's what happens when the Spirit of God takes control, that he's able to speak boldly with frankness, with openness, and he declares, it is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then when they hear that, these that are these very erudite, academically trained, well-schooled individuals. They hear it. They see it first. That's the word that's used here. The word see or saw is thoreo. And thoreo, you get your English word theater. It means to put it together. It's a, uh, in, it's a participle. It means that it was an ongoing action. Oftentimes, participles have an ing on the end in English. And so they were seeing, they were putting it all together. They're seeing what John and Peter and this layman now walking, they're seeing that, they're putting it together as they're listening to Peter, and they saw what? They saw their boldness. It wasn't just simply a man that couldn't walk before, now walking. No, it was more than that. They saw the boldness. And the word that Jews there, parousia, that word is a very interesting word. It means that they are able to speak, and they're able to speak, and the word 
Posh means all. They were able to speak openly. They could speak, and the Holy Spirit doesn't speak out of a vacuum. If you never read the scriptures, he's not going to, in that moment, give you scriptures so that you're able to speak. No, it's because that Peter and John and the rest of the apostles, they had been with Jesus. They had heard scripture, but before that, they were disciples of John the Baptist. They had spent time in the word. They were now able to put it together. They're not then concerned about themselves. They're not afraid, and they're able to speak directly, openly, without hesitation to these religious leaders. And they then saw that. They put it together. They saw that Peter and John, and then the next verb is interesting. It's the word perceived. And that word is really interesting. It's a word that means to comprehend. It's the word that's used in Ephesians when Paul prays for those believers at Ephesus. And he says that you might comprehend the height, the depth, the width, the breadth of the love of God. You might put it together. You might comprehend. You might grasp it in your mind. So notice they went from seeing to comprehending. And that also is a participle. They perceived it. It became a part of them. And then they had perceived what? They had perceived that Peter and John were unlearned and ignorant men. Now, the word for ignorant there means that they were unlettered. That's what the word is. It's actually a grammaton. And the grammar is grammar is what the scribes were. They were grammarians. They were people that were writing letters. These are people that are unlettered. That's what it means to be unlearned. It doesn't mean that they are ignorant. It doesn't mean they don't know. They just didn't go to a yeshiva, or to some theological school. They didn't go to a Bible school and learn this. Instead, they learned it on their own. And maybe that's what's happened to you. Maybe what you know is as a result of the Spirit of God teaching you through the Word of God, the will of God, and now you have the power of God to communicate the message, the gospel of God. Isn't that great? You have the Holy Spirit, and that's what these men have, the same Holy Spirit that is able to bring what you have learned. But you have to learn it. You have to study to show yourself approved unto God. Don't be hesitant to memorize the scriptures. The more you know, the more you memorize, the more it's a part of you, the more the Holy Spirit can use you. And so that they also were ignorant. Now, that word ignorant is the word idios. We get your English word idiot from it. Oh, but don't put it there, because that's oftentimes translated as somebody that is not very intelligent. has nothing to do with intelligence. It means self. That's all the word idios means. You get your English word idiosyncrasy from it. It means that it's unique to you. You have your idiosyncrasies, things that you do, and the way you talk, the way you act, the way you think, they're all unique to you. That's what that word means. It means common. In other words, instead of acting in a certain way that was trained at some school, you, you're just acting like yourself. It's just you. And that's what these men were. And that's what they observed. They observed their openness and frankness, but they also observed that these men were just common people. And maybe that's what you are. There is that statement made by Abraham Lincoln, God must love the common people. There's, he created so many of them. And the majority of us are just like that. We're just ordinary. But God delights to take ordinary things. Yeah, he took five th small stones and, and he brought down Goliath. He takes a, a, just a, a stick that was in the hand of, of Moses and he opens the Red Sea. God takes the ordinary. In fact, when he became a man, he became ordinary. There was nothing exceptional, nothing handsome, nothing that was unusual about Jesus. He was just an ordinary baby, and he became an ordinary man. But who was on the inside, you know and I know, is God. 
And that's what has happened in your life. If you know Jesus and you've surrendered your life to him, he has taken the ordinary and he's made it something uh, super ordinary about you. And so then we find that they took knowledge, they perceived that they were ignorant men, unlearned, and they marveled. And that word marveled is now, and it's so interesting, it's the imperfect. It means it's an action that is not completed yet. And when they're marveling, that's something that's emotional. Notice they go from what they see, to what they think, and now what they feel. They're marveling. And the word marvel means that they are stunned. They are brought to this place of being uh, absolutely amazed. And they're marveled and they took knowledge. Now that word, take knowledge, it's epigenosis. And gnosis is the same word that Peter had used earlier when he said, be it known to you all. That is gnosis. This is epinosis. It means to know at a deeper, more confident level. It is the word that is constantly used in 1 John, that you might know him and that he is the Christ and the Son of God, that you're not just knowing it intellectually, but you have a confidence in knowing it. Now, they have gone from seeing to having then an intellectual understanding to then have an emotional uh, response, and, and now they take knowledge. It is something that is a confidence. They are taking knowledge of what? That they had been with Jesus. That the unusual thing that was about Peter and John and the way they spoke, it wasn't because they had come from a certain town, because they had a certain education. No, it was that they had been with Jesus. But Jesus says, and it's in Matthew 28, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And you may say, well, how is Jesus with me now? He's at the right hand of the Father. But I remind you, he said, if I go away, I will give you another comforter. The Holy Spirit is with you. In fact, he's not just with you. He's in you. He is dwelling within you. You are a result of him regenerating you, making a new creation. So they took notice they had been with Jesus and beholding the man. Now, on top of all that they're witnessing with John and Peter, they're beholding the man. And the word is blepo. And that just simply means they're seeing. They're seeing a man that they're not arguing. They're not saying, oh, this guy isn't walking. Somebody's holding him up. There's strings attached like he's a puppet. Oh, no, they're not saying that. What they're observing is just simply this man that had been begging before is now praising. This man who was lame and couldn't walk before now is dancing. This man is changed completely. And they observe that. And they see him standing. And as a result, the last verb, they say nothing. Literally, they can't contradict what Peter is saying. Well, with that all in mind, I ask you again, do you think because of your lack of letters behind your name that you have nothing to say? Jesus had said earlier, you shall be my witnesses when you receive power from on high and you'll be witnesses unto me about the resurrection, about the new life, because of him that began a good work in you and will complete it. You're more than just simply an ordinary person now. Father, thank you for your word, and thank you for the changes that it makes in us. Use us, Father, each one of us, around the word, wherever we are. Use us, Father, though we be ordinary, that you, Father, do extraordinary things through us. To your glory, in Jesus' name we pray, amen.